Hi, my name is uh, Thomas Page. Most people call me just, just Tom. Double alumnus of the University of Detroit and now known as the University of Detroit Mercy. First graduated from uh, here in, in 1971 and then five years later graduated from the, the graduate school here with a Master, master of Arts. Uh, my undergraduate degree was in the area of psychology uh, with an industrial option. Leaving high school, graduating from high school, I, like many people, didn't know really where, where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do, and I, and I certainly didn't know. So after, after uh, undergraduate, I really wasn't sure what I was, was going to do. I thought, well, psychology is interesting. I was burnt out, as many of you might be, on school. So I started working for the Wayne County Health Department. I worked in a respiratory disease division dealing with the disease we don't hear too much about these days called tuberculosis. <laughs> and I, so I worked right in the heart of, uh, heart of uh, Detroit, which was called the Cass Corridor, and now it's called Midtown, as well as in some of the other, other uh, surrounding areas. And I had this interest, and some of it came from my education here, in alcohol and drug abuse. Wayne County Health Department wound up actually sending me to some specialized training. And so that became my area of, of expertise, was alcohol and drugs and how they affect the body, treatment, rehabilitation, therapy, uh, therapy for that. While I was doing that, at the same time I was attending graduate school here. For reasons that are not clear to me to this day, I decided I, mean, I would like to join the Detroit Police Department. So it wasn't a career that I want to go into law enforcement. No, I wanted to be in the city of Detroit, the Detroit Police Department, interacting with people, really believing that, that I, could, I could help people. Uh, the idea of somebody coming in with an advanced degree, a master's degree, <clears throat> was, was very, very rare. Uh, people knew about me when I came in, and what the heck are you doing here, this college guy with the degree? Um, but I, I, I knew very soon that this, I fit here. I fit here. I enjoyed making decisions. I enjoyed making important decisions, sometimes life or death decisions. To go a little bit forward, I spent about three and a half years. This is about the time that one would spend in, say, high school or an undergraduate degree, and I was laid off. In 1980, I was laid off from the Detroit Police Department as part of a department-wide cutback. I then joined the Los Angeles, California Police Department, starting there on February 23rd, 1981. So what happened then, I, I worked in a number of assignments. I, I worked the street in places uh, uh, you've heard of, I'm sure, Hollywood, North Hollywood, uh, places uh, like that. I became a training officer. I was then up for promotion. Uh, I had a my master's degree, I had prior experience, so I was going to be able to be promoted real quickly. Then, out of the blue, I get a phone call from uh, somebody on, on the LAPD, a supervisor, and said, uh, uh, we're developing this program, it's called Drug Recognition, uh, Drug Recognition Expert. The basic premise is, can officers, at roadside particularly, can they, based on observations and based on certain procedures, be able to determine if somebody's impaired, not just used, impaired by drugs to the point that they cannot safely operate a motor vehicle. So that's very, it's very topical today. It's almost every day in, in, in the news. I was this sort of good bridge between law enforcement, research, ac academia. So I participated in, in this study. We, we, we did this study. Uh, it took a little while for the full report to, to come out. But basically what it said is that Yes, this small group of LAPD officers were very accurate in determining if somebody was under the influence of a specific kind of a, a, a drug. And how that was uh, proven uh, or supported was through blood testing. Basically showed that about in the mid 80% of the time that the officers, actually is higher than that, was corro uh, corroborated by the laboratory. Because of that, the federal government got uh, involved and said, wow, we need to, I guess this, this program sort of does work, is that we will now want to shift the focus between just alcohol to, uh, to other drugs. But at the same time, then there was a development of this drug recognition uh, expert program. One of the 
first steps was, oh, we need a curriculum. We need a curriculum. Of course, I had to do it on my own time. Uh, spent lots of times in, in libraries uh, doing my research, but combining what I already knew about drugs with, with the research, I helped to develop that initial curriculum. And then all of a sudden things started really, really taking off. Places around the country and even around the world wanted to know more about this, started coming to, to LA, and then we developed an actually a specialized unit, developed from the very small numbers to a formalized program, a formalized curriculum, a formalized step-by-step -step, uh, procedure. To the point that, just to update you to this day, we have a certification process in which people that, that actually complete effectively all the, all the training become certified by the International Association of Chiefs of Police. We now have over 10,000 certified officers around the country as, as well as in Canada. We've had probably 40,000 that have gone through, through the training. The final exam, uh, it's, it's almost like it's a, a narrative. Uh, it's, a, it's an essay type of, of question. And that actually came from, um, to a large degree, from what I found in graduate school here, is that, okay, cover this topic, write about this topic in, in total. So that definitely came from here. We have another standard also that two other experts have got to recommend this officer to become, uh, to become certified. That specifically came from my graduate school training here in which you'd go in before a board and they'd have to agree. So it wasn't just one person, you're friends with this one professor. It was like the whole thing. In fact, it was in a room like this with three different disciplines represented is that you had to convince all, all of these people and they'd throw questions at you. And that's exactly, that, so that became cemented in terms of the, the international, international curriculum. The liberal arts education, I, I think, prepares you not so much to do something, to do a specific task, but how to think, how to communicate, what is the ethical aspects of that. It prepares you for things that haven't even been, say, discovered yet. It prepares you for cultural changes that haven't even been anticipated yet. Sort of the culmination of my career has been working with this university in the establishment of what's called the Drug Recognition Resource Center and Archive. So we house on the third floor here, but it's a chance to bring in various materials, books, papers, correspondence, as well as the ephemera of this whole field of drug recognition. And in bringing in books here and donating them here, it was amazing to me to look at things that I had accumulated over the years that deal with the American disease, drug addiction, from a sociological standpoint. Uh, the, the eyes, the biology, the anatomy of the eyes, dealing with, with science all of the, these different fields. So now I'm working with the library system with the university to accumulate things really from around the world that so this place can be really a leader, uh, a leader in, in not just archiving them, but making these things available.